It is the 16th of December 2022. Welcome to UBC. To UBC News tonight. Uh, today at 8 p.m. My name is Sharon Chomdisha. Let's take a look at our top stories of the day. In today's news, the budget views come as Namgan's essential debate continues in Parliament. UPDF accounts for 40 ADF militias following Toroko attack. Reappointment of Biaru Gaba as an SSF Managing Director attracts criticism. And cricket cranes in our sports news remain unbeaten in five games after 97 runs win against Rwanda. A very good evening once again. My name is Sharon Chundish and welcome to UBC News tonight. In our top stories of the day, residents of Kobuk, I beg your pardon, in our top stories of the day, members of parliament spearheading the censure move against housing state minister Patsis Namganza has disagreed with Dr. Chris Bariomunsi on the call for reconciliation. This follows a hint on Thursday by the ICT and National Guidance Minister on a possibility by the ruling NRM party to have the two female national leaders work in harmony. Now the members of parliament say it is not a small matter as asserted by Dr. Chris Bariomunsi and we have details on this story. The MPs insist that the censure move against many Sanam Ganza passes will go on. Censuring someone should come as a, 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 the last resort. We have seen in other, mini, in other countries, South Africa, even here in Africa, when you are a minister and you, you do wrong, take responsibility. And this struggle is not personal. There is no fight between a presiding officer and a minister. The issue we are putting integrity as per the ad hoc committee reco recommendations. There is a disagreement with what Minister for Information Communications, Technology and National Guidance alluded to on Thursday afternoon. Because the Parliament has more useful work that should drain our energy so that Ugandans benefit from a Parliament. But Yomunsi suggests reconciliation for peaceful coexistence describing the reasons for censure as trivial. We are going to reconcile these two leaders, the Minister and the right honorable speaker. Because the NRIM as a party and leaders government, we believe in the cohesion, we believe in leaders working together. To this, the MPs are saying no. We want to inform the nation that Honorable Chris Baramizi, what he have stated, it is not connected. If there are issues that for him he knows, as a minister in charge of guidance, he should not try to connect it to the notice about the censor of the minister in question. Not all legislators share this point of view. Earlier this week, Kavali Municipality Member of Parliament, Nicholas Kamara, poked holes in the censure process. To date, he has not changed his mind. We are all here on our own merit. We are we, we, we elected by our people, and there must not be just a small group in the parliament. Oh, it is. Oh, I am moving the procedure. Then the other one comes. Then another one comes to complete. Then immediately they prosecute you. No, this group must not take over parliament. But because everyone is here on his own merit. How genuine this censure move is, and whether it is being done in good faith, are some of the questions that are beginning to come up. Henry Okrut, UBC. In more stories, UPDF has sounded a warning to the Allied Democratic Forces, ADF militants, planning to carry out attacks on civilians and the army. The UPDF spokesperson, Brigadier General Felix Kleige, says it is high time the rebels sought amnesty or else test the UPDF firepower. At least 20 out of the 40 ADF rebels who attacked residents in Toroko have been killed and accounted for by the UPDF. Ivan Kawa reports. 
The Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, has accounted for the 40 ADF militants who attempted to infiltrate security operations in the areas of Werambule in Intoroko district. The intention of attacking Intoroko was to divert us from the pressure that we have mounted in, in Ituri region. Little did they know that we had forces in the rear. And so our, one of the mountain battalions that is deployed in the area responded quickly and dealt with them a decisive blow. 20 of the attackers were put out of action, 15 arrested, and 16 SMGs, one PK machine gun, and rounds of ammunition recovered. And none of those who came from Congo to attack in Toroko went back. Those who attempted to go back, they drowned in the Vasemliki and the crocodiles enjoyed them. UPDF spokesperson Brigadier Felix Kulaije says they managed to get vital information from the attackers who were captured. Uh, those who have captured alive are telling us the instructions were go and kill the kafiris. You know, if you are not uh, part of them, they call you a kafiri. A pagan, in other words. As of now, the situation is under control in Intoroko and the population has started normal operations. They have been able to harvest the uh, cocoa and the coffee. Original ADF was enjoying it and they're making money out of it. Now they want to enter back. Children have gone back to school. So as they enter Christmas, at least they have uh, had their holidays. The ADF militants have been neutralized and weakened under an offensive by the UPDF which continues to further hunt for the scampering rebels in the thickets of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The army assures the public of safety during the festive seasons, but calls for vigilance and report any form of threat. The UPDF has reinforced the Uganda Police Force to provide added security in this period. Ivan Kahua, UBC News, in Kampala. Thank you so much, Ivan Kwahua, for that report. In more stories, residents of Koboko District have condemned acts of looting by suspected South Sudan People's Defense Forces soldiers after they crossed the border to invade communities in Oraba Town Council. According to the residents, such acts by the South Sudan Army do not portray the spirit of Pan-Africanism, East African integration, and the stake of asylum seekers in Uganda. The suspected South Sudan soldiers entered into a rubber town council on the morning of Thursday, invading and looting property worth millions of shillings from residents of Kenyabuli and Kangode cells in Aromoni Ward, Oraba Town Council, Koboko District. Uh, right now, South Sudan is a part of East African community where we now needed to cultivate friendship, brotherhood, as far as Pan-Africanism is concerned. So the way of behaving like rebels again, when they are no longer rebels, that's very unfriendly policies. Therefore, coming to Uganda, looting property, abducting people, is an unfriendly policy which is likely to affect the relationship between the two countries. The SPLA government has known that most of their people have come as refugees due to this war and started that they are in Uganda. And uh, likewise, some of them who never went to the camp, they are residing with the local people around the border there. In fact, the way they have looted people, the people's property and money, and they are trying to, in fact, disorganize it the peace and the security of this nation. In the process, assailants are said to have kidnapped a 16-year-old boy, a son to a suspected rebel leader they were looking for, but was later released. Koboko District, Resident District Commissioner Tom Olinga confirmed the attack by the same soldiers. Uh, at first they were, they, were, they were denying that it isn't their soldiers who crossed to Uganda. But eventually they accepted and, uh, and agreed to follow up the animals and bring them back. And because now it is one which is still lost, the other one came back. So that they, 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 they engaged their commander on the ground uh, 
to bring back the animal and they gave us two days in order for them to bring back the animal. Unfortunately, before they could even bring back the animal, yesterday morning, again, a group of armed people we uniformed in uh, uniforms of, of uh, South Sudan People Defense Force crossed in a pursuit of people whom they suspect are uh, uh, the liars with NASA uh, with NAS or they are NAS rebels, as far as uh, a place called Dlambiance. Dlambiance is another town, small town in 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 Oraba. So when they reached that place, they never found the person they were targeting. But actually, in Uganda. So they go, they kidnap, they kidnap, they kidnap the son and went with the son away. Now on going back, they started getting shooting at civilians. Students were scared and they ran away. And then they started picking items from their households. And some of the items which were recorded were TV sets, radios, mattresses, granites, sacks, rice, and money. They were picked and uh, they started uh, retreating back with them to Sudan. However, locals are demanding both governments of Uganda and South Sudan to amicably handle the issue, but also pave way of compensating the affected people. And the government should really speak and speak to the SPLA government. I wanted uh, those who were looted, the government, our government, should establish what is looted. And uh, the Sudan government, since it's their forces who have entered, they, they have to compensate that. I think I call upon the government of Juba to intervene in this matter so that our brotherhood is maintained. A general inquiry file has been opened to investigate circumstances under which armed foreign forces suspected to be South Sudan People's Defense Forces unlawfully entered into Uganda and invaded communities. No arrests have been made so far. Joseph Odamam. UBC News in Koboko. The Prime Minister of Uganda, Right Honorable Abna Nabanja, and the Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Betty Amongi, have been petitioned to rescind their decision to appoint Richard Biarugawa as Managing Director for National Social Security Fund. According to Matua Job Richard, retirement reappointment, I beg your pardon, of Biarugawa, whose 12-year tenure as the managing director of NSSF expired upon attainment of the mandatory retirement age of 60, which violates the public service standing orders. The petitioner further states that Biarugawa can only be entertained with the permission of workers saving with NSSF through a referendum. Take a look. The Right Honorable Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda should receive that decision she made. Last month, the Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Betty Amongi, directed the NSSF Managing Director, Richard Biarugawa, to vacate office after he clocked the mandatory retirement age of 60 years. However, a few weeks later, the Prime Minister, Robina Nabanja, wrote a letter seeking to reverse the Minister's directive and order to have restate Richard Biarugaba to office. Overall reported misconduct of Mr. Richard Biarugaba in the management of affairs at NSSF. This has been backed with the evidence of petition of workers, petition of employees of NSSF to the various offices. Workers are complaining. People are not accessing their midterm benefit. So whose interest is Mr. Biarugaba serving? The decision has attracted public attention challenging the basis of the Prime Minister's decision on the matter. I believe there are people in the hierarchy of employees in the NSSF who can be elevated to reach that position of managing director. And there are petitions from procurement department that there are some suspicious activities of this very man. So there is conflict of interest that must be investigated thoroughly. Accordingly, a one matter job Richard has petitioned both the Prime Minister and the Line Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development with the view that Richard Biarugaba's reappointment be rescinded. On what, on, on, on what ground is it? did the members of the board of NSSF base themselves to recommend reappointment of Richard Biarugaba? Somebody who is past the retirement age. So there is a need to probe. There could be something wrong. In his petition, Matua enlists 
certain grounds warranting his petition, begging authorities not to do what he termed as setting a wrong precedence in the public service sector. Has been the, cha the leading champion of educating Ugandan on TV, in a seminar, on a radio, that Ugandans should save money so that after retirement they can go and invest, so that after retirement they can have a good life. So let him go and invest the money he has saved also. Was he only telling Uganda to, to save while he was not saving? UBC TV managed to peru through the petition and ascertained that indeed both the office of the Prime Minister and that of the Minister of Gender, Labor and Social Development acknowledged receipt of the petition. And I plead with the Minister, Honorable Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, don't reappoint Mr. Bierugaba. If any, we should go for a referendum as savers of NSSF to, to, to choose whether or not appoint Biarugaba as, an, as MOD at NSSF. However, efforts to get the minister's comments on the matter went futile as she declined to answer our calls. Deborah Nama Monde, Dokas Kimono, UBC News. Thank you so much, Dara Nama and Dokas Kimono, for that report. The Usalama Kwa Wote operation against illegal guns and ammunitions in Karamoja has since July 2021 helped restore sanity in the region. Uganda People's Defense Forces, UPDF, reports that over 29,000 livestock have been recovered and more efforts remain at play to return business to normal. The UPDF spokesperson, Brigadier Felix Courageous, summarizes the status quo of the Karamoja operation. Take a look. Guns recovered from the warriors, 652. Ammunition recovered from the warriors, 4,097. Warriors put out of action, 654. Warriors arrested, 21,751. Warriors prosecuted, 686. Livestock recovered, 29,270. Now the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development has finalized arrangements to have the long-awaited real estate sector regulation bill presented to Cabinet and Parliament in January 2023. This was revealed by the Commissioner for Land Policy, Harrison Irumba, during certificate handover ceremony for real estate managers, developers and specialists organized by the Real Estate Institute of East Africa at Imperial Royal Hotel, Kampala. For more than 10 years now, members of the Association of the Real Estate Segments of Uganda, Area Uganda, have been lobbying for a specific law to regulate and professionalize the real estate sector to be like their counterparts in the legal and medical sectors. Commissioner Land Policy at the Minister of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Harrison Irumba, has revealed that all the technical details regarding the law have been finalized and ready to be presented to both Cabinet and Parliament by January 2023. This was during the certificate handover ceremony for real estate developers, managers, valuers and specialists organized by the Real Estate Institute of East Africa at Imperial Royal Hotel, Kampala during either the first week or the second week of January. We should be inviting you to come and get your last input into this process. And it's a smart organized neighborhood. The Institute officials, Nicholas Salinaitwe and Vincent Agaba, highlighted some of the activities of the Institute. We train them. We have had graduates from Mobus, graduates from Ngozi, when they come, to our offices, we teach them afresh. Next year, we are going to Chigali. The number of alumni are going to Chigali. So the trainings are going to start regionally. Next year, we shall train in Rwanda. And we also want to train in Kenya. The function was attended by, among others, pioneer estate dealers and experts. Edward Kolinjuko for ABC TV, Kampala. 
In more news, residents of Chirinya, Bukasa, and neighboring villages have demonstrated over Parliament's act of no vote of no confidence and impeachment of the State Minister for Lands, Housing, and Urban Development on allegations of misconduct against the Speaker of Parliament, Annette Anita Mong. They asserted that she's the only person who stood by them when they were being evicted from the land. Recently, Parliament was on fire following allegations that Minister Passis Namuganza misbehaved by attacking the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Mong, and the August House in general, thereby demanded her impeachment. And she's continuing to denigrate the image of Parliament speaks volumes. Right, Honorable and Honorable Members, if I hurt you in any way, I regret. The vote of no confidence created anxiety among many Ugandans. In lieu of this, residents from villages of Chito, Namatabachirinya Bukasamak, others in Wakiso district are against Namuganza's impeachment. As far as our residents are concerned, their concern is perfect and very true. First of all, we disagree with the Parliament of Uganda pertaining the handling of Namuganza's issue. Namuganza has been on the forefront fighting the mafiaism, those who have been chasing us from the land. <laughs> These residents seen here in a peaceful demonstration are now calling for members of parliament and President Museveni's intervention. The chanting crowd recalled that it's Namuganza who rescued them when government wanted to evict them and construct an inland port in their area. But in 2016, the government decided that we should vacate this area. We looked for every body, our own MPs, Honorable Femuji was here, Honorable Seninde was here. We wanted somebody who could assist us take us to the president. But all of them, none did. It was only when we have sought favor from Honorable Namuganza. They allege there are mafia forces behind this move. Local leaders loaded Namuganza for our intervention in the matter that almost left residents homeless as government works on compensating them. president <laughs> Namuganza <laughs> Nampandi kile barua na ngamba kende wa honarebo na mugaza presidenti butuali mukabili tikatibu ya kwa sensoka ya muyabaji kola chi ya abaji kola ku. Amwa Ivan Juko for UBC News. <laughs>
protecting your money is as important as earning it. It is for this reason that the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda, DPF, was established by the Government of Uganda to provide deposit protection to customers of regulated financial institutions. In the unlikely event that your commercial bank, credit institution or microfinance deposit taking institution fails, the DPF will pay you up to 10 million Uganda shillings. Keep your personal information such as national identification number, mobile phone or an alternative bank account updated with your banker. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, contact DPF at Aha Towers, Plot 7 Lodel Road, Kampala. Call 0312-206-400 or visit our website at www.dpf.or.ug. At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat, exercise profile to adopt and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity and many others. For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart smartphone network ngalu, ngalu, ngalu. it's true what people say that when i wash and you wash your hands with soap we'll have less infections as ugandans after all it's hands that handle money it's hands that feed us hands that prepare soil for farming hands that we use to learn and hands that we use for fun. When I wash and you wash, it means clean hands for all. So, wash your hands with soap and clean water regularly to keep away infections and disease-causing germs. This message is from the National Hand Washing Secretariat with support from UNICEF. Uganda Small Scale Industries Association, USEA, is a business member organization for micro, small and medium industrialists that has been in existence since 1979 with over 10,000 members and 16 regional offices countrywide. USEA's key membership services include product development and marketing, training and skills development in technical vocation and business development, MSME consultancy and business advisory services, and being a leading advocacy organization for MSMEs in Uganda. Find us at Wuzia Building at Uma Show Grounds or call us on 0774-130-454. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and Data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. You're still watching UBC News tonight. In more stories, a total of 1,000 clergy compri comprising of reverends, chaplains and lay leaders from Kumi Diocese have been passed out after undergoing a one-week intensive patriotic training. Now, the colorful ceremony was held at Ngoda High School Playground and was presided over by State Minister for Energy, who also doubles as Member of Parliament for Kanyumu County, Sidronias Okasia Opolot, who represented the Vice President of Uganda, Jessica Lupo. We have more in the following story. Viva! 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 
State Minister for Energy Okasai Opoloch noted that this is the first time he was observing the church participating in patriotism training. While delivering his speech, Minister Okasai urged the patriots to embrace government programs that include M Yoga and Parish Development Module, among others. Honorable Okasai called upon the clergy to be advocates of development, particularly in Teso subregion and Uganda at large. He also called for unity in Teso. As a second tenant, we take hard work as a third tenant and take now the values of the Bishop of Komi Diocese, retired Reverend Michael Okui Eshakhan, thanked President Yoweli Kaguta Museveni, the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps, and the trainer who supported the patriotism training. God help us in mobilizing people to, ag to agree and to adopt the culture of working with the government. That's their job. Number two. During the same function, Bishop Okwi appealed to President Museveni to appoint a minister and two state ministers from Kumi Diocese, noting that Ngora, Kumi, and Bukedea districts were marginalized. I'd like to have a full minister come from Dance of Kumi region, two state ministers from the other districts. The Deputy Commissioner, National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps, attached to the President's office, Mubarak pointed out that this is the duty of every able-bodied citizen of this country to undergo military training, regardless of tribe, color, or religious affiliation. I have seen the capacity, actually, when they were marching around, I was imagining that if we come in diocese, Mwara, Kumi, and Bukedia is attacked, then we have a force. Mwara Resident District Commissioner Stefan Ekom advised the Patriots to lead by example by sharing the knowledge and skills acquired with other religious leaders. Well, congratulations to the 1,055 passed out. Now, Western Kole Diocese Bishop, Sorry, I beg your pardon. In more stories, Education, Conservation and Partners have launched a national strategy to promote wildlife conservation through community engagement. This was witnessed during a validation meeting on wildlife conservation education organized by the International Strategic Friends held here in Kampala. In the pursuit of wildlife and natural resources conservation, the government of Uganda has highlighted its strategy of creating awareness about the importance of wildlife to the development of the country. Now, this strategy seeks one to harmonize the message and to harmonize the efforts and strengthen our uh, awareness, the implementation of the activities on the ground and then enhance impact. According to the Chairman Board of Trustees, Uganda Wildlife Education Conservation, Benon Katumba, educating communities about wildlife will ensure harmonized coexistence and reduce human wildlife conflict. Since a human being is the leader on this planet, as God put it, I mean, with, the, with all the religious sects that we are in, we believe that there should not be a conflict. A human being should provide a solution. Therefore, you will call it a relationship. How do we relate? How do we coexist with God's creation? And the animals are not exception. The strategy that has been developed is now giving us very good guidance and targets, as well as targeting particular audiences. So the strategy is going to be very key in guiding us to be able to offer conservation education in the country for the different audiences secondary schools, primary schools, kindergartens. One of the strategic researchers behind the conservation strategy, Dr. Kosea Wambaka, explained their collective role in implementing the education strategy. This strategy is aimed at increasing awareness so that people can understand that no, wildlife is very important. Wildlife creates employment. Wildlife can help to mitigate these effects of climate change. So basically what we did was to collect the views of stakeholders, develop the document in a language or in a format that is internationally accepted, and then bring it here for national value. 
the strategy to create awareness to the increasing human population aims at ensuring a smooth wildlife and human coexistence for the nation's sustainable development. Joshua Kagor, UBC News in Kampala. Thank you so much, Joshua Kagor. Minister for Relief, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees, Engineer Hilary Neck, has disclosed that government has developed an agenda to tarmac all major roads in refugee districts, starting with Koboko Yumbe Road, to ease service delivery to refugees and host communities. On Neck at Luzira Villa in Luzira Village, Kululu Sub County, Yumbe District, during the launch of Forest Landscape Management Plan for BDBD Refugee Settlement, said this. Now, the plan spearheaded by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, in partnership with the UNHCR and other partners, is aimed at greening West Nile region. We have more in the following report. The five-year forest landscape management plan for BDBD refugee resettlement has been launched with an appeal to people in West Nile region to stop deforestation and conserve the environment. The Minister for Relief, Disaster Preparedness and Refugees, engineer Hilary Onek, while launching this plan, disclosed that the government is to tarmac major roads and extend electricity to refugee resettlements to ease service delivery. The World Bank has supported our proposal to construct and tarmac roads in the districts where the refugees or joining the district where the refugees are with other districts in Uganda. Minister Onek also warned opposition politicians against cheap popularity done through politicizing government programs, thereby tarnishing its image abroad. Those are not really patriots. You tell lies to destroy your country in order to feed yourself. When he's talking, he thinks that we are in hell here. We are not in hell. Uganda is a peaceful country. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization country representative Antonio Querido says under this forest landscape plan they intend to plant, conserve and protect the environment. It's to see how we plant more. Plant and grow, restore and protect are the key aspect of this plan. The Ministry of Water asserts that this plan has come at a time when the ministry is implementing running out of trees roots campaign where they target to plant 40 million trees annually. This project has a whole component of supporting refugee and host communities to enhance their biomass. Some district leader appealed to government to intensify sensitization campaigns countrywide about the dangers of cutting trees. Focus on improving on your household's income through embracing government programs. This forest landscape management plan for BDBD refugee resettlement targets to restore over 100 hectares of forest land in West Nile region by planting trees of various species. Brian Tumwinebiaruhanga, Andrew Sebira, UBC News. We'll take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more stories in business and sports news. It's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Fun battery for Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat 
exercise profile to adopt and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes, blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity and many others. For more information, find us at our head office in Kampala on Nasa Road, Conrad Plaza, second floor or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. We also have other branches in Bara and Jinja. Welcome to Friend Stadium. Everybody's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude. It's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? Ladies and gentlemen, it is no longer news that Ebola is with us. Please wash your hands with the soap every now and then. For the entire business community, ladies and gentlemen, let us lead by example. Let us sensitize our customers and let us be cautious. Avoid the handshaking, avoid the hugs, because it is dangerous for everyone. If you your loved ones or anyone else in your community is experiencing any Ebola signs and symptoms immediately. Inform the health officials in your area. You can also call 0800-100-066 or text 8500 for free to notify the health authorities. Together, we can beat Ebola. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health with support from USAID, WHO and UNICEF. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart smartphone network. You're still watching UBC News tonight and in our business stories in the final band of the year 2022, Bank of Uganda is unbothered by the rise in inflation during the past three months. Despite projection in spending levels of low cost during the festivities, the governing body insists on stability. The annual inflation rate in Uganda is marginally to 10.6% in November, from 10.7% in the previous month, but still holding close to 2012 highs. The Executive Director Supervision Bank of Uganda, Tumuwene Twinemanzi, says with this, the economy is apparently stable, despite the drastic inflation raise in the last two months. It is, however, believed that the main upward pressure continued to come, primarily from prices of food, non-alcoholic beverages, furnishings and household equipment plus education. Uh, interest rates are freely determined by demand and supply. So as government, our responsibility and as Bank of Uganda is to ensure that we will create an environment where interest rates can come down. But it's very hard to have interest rates coming down when you have inflation going up. But now that we have managed to contain inflation, for now, okay, then the next target is going to be one to bring down the inflation rate and the next target will be to bring down the lending rates. So it's a, it's a staggered process. Yeah. Basically around this year we have seen that the bank has suffered with a high NPA in the space of the microfinance portfolio. Now what we shall see come next year is the SMEs because of their tenure that is long, we are going to monitor and see how they behave after. Bank of Uganda further revealed emphasis on cyber security as hackers continue to up their game amidst economic pressure. In terms of the risks we're going to focus on, cyber security risks or cyber security threats is, is now front and center in terms of one of the risks that we're most concerned about. The harmonious working relations with banks has eased transactions with the high expansion rate of financial services to the local people. Finance Trust Bank that elevated from microfinance institution to a fully-fledged bank is expanding its swings with more branches countrywide. 
The latest is in the shifting of its main offices to El Blaza Nakasero, boasting over 500,000 customers countrywide. Founded in 1984 as a women finance institution, the bank believes in inclusiveness and elevating low-income earners. And uh, the reason we are focusing on the women is because an uh, unempowered woman makes uh, an empowered home and it also empowers the man. So the women are there to support the, the men in um, financial management and as a result we've come up with a number of um, financial literacy programs where we are training the women on how to manage their finances. Bank of Uganda believes that there is a significant stride in the banking sector with different banks registering performance increase, mainly in loan acquisitions, bank deposits among others. Sada Mubali, Amon Gabo, UBC News. And lastly, now business stories. Uganda artisan and small-scale miners seek audience towards drafting policies to streamline the, oper the operationalization of Mining and Mineral Act 2022. Now, the main focus of the engagement will be centered on the license fees for artisanal miners. Rich, take a look. After operating informally for quite a long time, government offered a law to streamline and register artisanal miners. The Mining and Minerals Act of 2022 was passed to recognize small-scale mining business. Also to protect the environment. When you are mining and you think you are not going to continue in that place, you should cover the whole, recover it, so that the land is utilized for other purposes. And also avoid uh, dangerous substances to be used in processing uh, minerals like gold and so on. So there is a lot in the, in the law. Formalizing this sector would provide an opportunity to stakeholders to access financial and other related assistance by presenting valid license. Uh, financial institutions, once the lances are there, that they should help these people with the equipment because we can indicate to them these are capable of paying. Artisanal miners want the line ministry to incorporate their values in the development of law implementation framework. But the license fees, the process of acquiring licenses, we are saying some of these small licenses may not necessarily need to go to the minister. Someone should be appointed in the ministry to act for and on behalf of the minister. So those are some of the issues that we have concluded in our, in our position policy recommendation. Once they are good and fit the regulation, we we'll put them there. The past Mining and Minerals Act of 2022 bans the use of mercury in the process. Now miners seek a hand to afford the alternatives. The plants, most of these uh, facilities we have at the artisan and small scale mining level cost in excess of 200 million shillings. So the alternative that is available right now, which is cyanide, costs way more than many of these miners' projects um, are worth as we speak. So we are saying if you are burning mercury, how are you now helping the miners to cope? When they are formalized, they will form associations. And in associations, they pull resources together, and then they are able to, to, to acquire licenses, acquire land, and put up uh, cyanide plants. That can help in what? In the processing of gold. Leaders in the minerals and old communities decry exploitation by foreign investors. Certain miners take our people for granted, take our communities for granted. They think they just have to come, pick the gold and run away. We support development. But gold in our communities should not become a burden. The regulation of artisanal mining sector is expected to boost the country's tax base, widen market for miners, and improve the community's standards of living. Abdul Nasser Lubama, UBC News. Over the years, we've dreamed to get onto the world stage. We've had that dream crushed. We've witnessed a total defeat of what could have been our greatest moment. We've felt our spirits go up only to take a hard fall. We've had our fires burn out and leave only scars. We've seized the wind and had it pulled from our grasp. 
We've seen pain and we've seen loss of the last fragments of hope. But <laughs> we are made of resilience and resilience never stops dreaming. So we will dream even bigger with the Cranes Cup Bowl 2026. Together, let's take Uganda to the next FIFA World Cup. Together, let's take Uganda to the next FIFA World Cup. For every now special you buy, we will give 50 shillings to the Uganda Cranes 2026 fund. You will also get the chance to choose how the Cranes Cup Bowl contributions are spent. Now special, official beer of the FIFA World Cup and official beer partner of the Uganda Cranes. Alcohol is not for sale to persons under 18. Please drink responsibly. Get value for your money by choosing the right paint. With Global Paints, you don't just paint, but paint for generations to come. Make Global Paints a paint of choice and make your building a paradise. We have weather coat emulsion, undercoat emulsion, silk vinyl emulsion, flat emulsion, super gloss and high gloss. Global Paint, a reliable product. You're still watching UBC News tonight and as we conclude with our sports stories, the cricket cranes continued with their form in the East African T20 Tri-Nation Series today when they went on to beat Rwanda by 97 runs in the third encounter of tournament. Now this win makes the cranes the leaders of three-team table with nine points and seven games to play. This tournament is happening at Gahanga Stadium in Kigali, Rwanda. More in the report. Great day for Team Uganda here at the Gahanga Stadium in Chigali. Fifth win out of five games and a third win against Team Rwanda. The Cricket Crane scored 153 runs for seven wickets in 20 overs and limited Rwanda to 56 runs all out, emerging winners by 97 runs. Man of the match and spin bowler Henry Senyondo displayed incredible bowling skills to collect four wickets for the team in six overs. His brother, also sensational batsman Simon Sesazi, contributed 55 runs as Brian Masaba team captain contributed 34 runs, not out, to Uganda's victory. My plan was to bowl uh, to apply more pressure because the more I bowl, more dot balls, more pressure comes to the net. And uh, all get wickets for the team. Though the team struggled in their batting session, the assistant coach Jackson Ogwang is confident the team's strategy worked for them. Uh, a brilliant start, uh, a brilliant start to the tournament uh, for the boys. We have won five out of five, and uh, uh, that's a very good, uh, uh, positive in the right direction. Yes, they have played well. Uh, the last uh, five games, we have amazed uh, close to 600 runs in this game so far, and uh, we are happy uh, with the progress. Yes, uh, today was uh, kind of uh, different, and uh, what I would say that is part of the process. We would not uh, play on the same kind of wicket every day. So, on tough conditions like what we encountered today, we had to adjust. Uh, of course, we have been uh, playing a very positive uh, uh, cricket, but uh, but again, uh, the smartness came in today, whereby we would not uh, go entirely out uh, hitting the ball. We had to adjust and run in between the wicket. But we knew. We, if we get uh, close to 140, that would be a defendable score for us. Uganda currently leads the three-team table, followed by Tanzania, with Rwanda at the bottom. The teams will take a rest day on Saturday, 17th December 2022 and return to action on Sunday. Uganda will go up against Tanzania. Grace Joyce Kemgisa, UBC News. Well, thank you so much, Grace Kemigese, for the report from Randa. We'll be waiting for more highlights and for whatever transpires. Let's take one final look at the headlines before we come to the end of the bulletin. News come up as Namuganza Centre debate continues in Parliament. Your PDF accounts for 40 ADF militias following the attack. I'm 
stories at HDN, reappointment of Yarugaba as NSSF Managing Director attract criticism. And lastly now sports news, cricket cranes remain unbeaten in five games after 97 runs win against Rwanda. Well, that's all we had for you this evening. Make sure you do tune in again at 10 p.m. for more news coming your way. My name is Sharon Chandusha. Have a good night. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap. Avoid handshaking and hugging. Avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 one zero 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 six six or send a free SMS to your report on eight five zero zero. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health Organization. soon on UBC. Uganda is no doubt beautiful, beautiful beyond measure. A land of sunshine, breathtaking stunning sights, and the amazing lush greenery. My name is Drago. Join me as I set sail to show you the pearl of Africa that we know and love. A chance to get out. A chance to appreciate the best luxurious holiday destinations. Often dream about traveling overseas, but many forget that exploring their own country can be just as thrilling. I will be 
surprised, amazed, pushed to the limits of my fears. This week on UBC. Bringing you a brand new show, Teens Crown, right here at UBC. <laughs> <laughs> 